but go to Second Kings. We're gonna Second um, Kings, the fourth chapter, and we're gonna look at verses one through seven. And um, even though this is a very familiar scripture, and even one of my favorites uh, to preach from, actually, the Lord uh, showed me something a little different in it this time. And I'm going to share it with you guys, and I pray that you guys will receive it and that you will see it, uh, and that you will, um, and that it will affect you the way it is affecting me. Amen? Amen. That it will help this church even. The word of the Lord says a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors empty vessels empty vessels empty vessels do not gather just a few and when you have come in you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour into all those vessels then pour into all those empty vessels then pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. I want to uh, use for a subject, from not enough to more than enough. From not enough to more than enough. From not enough to more than enough. Father, I ask that you would just bless this word. I open myself up to your heart, your mind, your voice, that I will speak what is on your heart, oh God. I pray for the listeners in the house today. I pray that they will hear what the Spirit is saying to the house. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. From not enough to more than enough, I have always preached this text of Scripture uh, coming from the perspective of having a need, having, you know, not enough to meet my needs and needing, you know, God to, to, to show me how to get more stuff, more money, more whatever. Uh, but the Lord began to show me something just a little bit different in this text, and it's kind of coming from an evangelistic uh, perspective, I guess you could say. It's uh, also, coming to those who are struggling in their faith, those of you that may be feeling empty, dried up, um, maybe feeling like you don't have any spiritual energy, that you're not as excited and uh, have that same passion that you used to have when you first got saved. And uh, in this text, it's talking about somebody who has died and how the resources have dried up and how there's this debt that's been left behind and how there's no funds to cover it and here come the creditors, come on. Right. Here come the creditors and they're threatening to take the only thing of value that is left and so here this woman is, she's desperate. Come on, she's desperate, she doesn't know what to do. You know, so she goes to the man of God Come on, she goes to the man of God and she's like, look, my, my husband used to work for you. He was one of your, one of your servants and, and, and he was faithful and now he's died and, and here we are, his family, we've, we're left behind and we're in need and 
he goes on to talk to her. He tell her, you know, what do you have? What's in your house? And 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 she says, really nothing, nothing but a little bit of oil in a jar. And the Lord began to talk to me about that little bit of oil in the jar and how she really had put no value on it. It didn't seem like it was worth anything to her. It was just a little. She said, I mean, she called it nothing. She said, I got nothing. All I got is this, this little, this oil that's in the jar. And But the prophet knew it was worth something. At least you got something to work with. And the Lord began to speak to me about the body of Christ and how we have now taken value away from the oil, from the Holy Spirit that we have on the inside of us. We, we, we don't really put the value on it that it really possesses. It's a lot of power. It's a lot of, it, it's a lot of value in it. And, and because we don't put the value on it, we pretty much lost our passion for the gospel, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, 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 it's a bunch of empty vessels out there that need what we have. But we don't see the value. We, we think it's really not that much, and, and it really doesn't do that much. So she goes to the man of God, and, and he tells her what to do. He gives her these instructions, and she obeys the instructions. And I was thinking about how often in the body of Christ we have been in the place where this woman is in a spiritual sense. We've been like her where... Uh, uh, something has died. Something has dried up and it has died in us. Come on. Something has died. And, and, and now here come the enemy. Because he knows that that thing that you used to rely on and depend on has died in you. And now that it has died in you, he says, oh, I can get them now. I'm, I'm coming for what I'm coming for the most part. I'm coming for what's really valuable to them. I'm coming now. Because something has died. Come on. And, and, and so you, you get in this spot. All of you have been in this spot. And then you come to the church. You come to the woman of God or the man of God. Or, or you come to a revival. You come to whatever. And you need a word. She went to the man of God because she needed a word. And then he gives her a word. And what she does is she obeys the word. Sometimes... We obey the word. And sometimes we don't obey the word. But she obeyed the word. And she went and she did every single thing that he told her to do. She completes the first assignment. But after she completes the first assignment, she goes back. Come on. She goes back to the man of God. And she says, now I did what you told me to do. And then he says, now this is what you do. Come on, she goes for the second word. She goes for the next step. And many times, we don't go back for the next step. And we're wondering why. Come on, I did what they said, but it's not working. But you didn't go back. Come on, you didn't go back for the next word. So she goes back and she gets the next word. Come on. And, and, and then when she gets the next word, come on. Then she gets and, and, and she does what he says. And when she does what she does the second time, she gets what it is that she needs. Come on, she gets what it is. The Lord is saying to us, we have to stop half-stepping. Come on, we, we got to quit doing half the assignment. Come on, we got to quit just functioning in our desperation. When I'm desperate, I'm running to God. When, when I'm desperate, I'm, I'm looking to him and I'm saying, God, I need your help. I don't know what to do. What do I do now? And here he comes. He gives us a word. He gives us a prophetic word. He gives us a word through the word. Come on. And, and we run out with that word. But we don't do all the word. Come on. You, you don't do all the word. And so the Lord began to talk to me because even when I was sitting over there doing worship and I watched the people struggle. Some were struggling to press in. And some had no intention to press in because they had no strength to press in. They were lethargic and couldn't press in. They were fearful and couldn't press in. They weren't ready to make the commitment, come on, to press in, come on. The, 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 the word was being given from the stage. The 
word was coming down from heaven and the word was saying forget about everybody else forget about what else you got to do when you leave here forget about what you did before you got here my god if you would just press in hallelujah if you would just press in i would do something with that little oil come on that little oil that's on the inside of you i would do something with that little oil he says you have just enough to get more than enough. And I know that you may not believe this, but you can come in tired. You can come in sick. You can come in hurting. You can come in distracted. You can come in with burdens on you. But if you would learn, come on, to just press in over that. Come on, if you would not let that rule on the inside of you, if you would not let your tiredness rule and your distractions rule and your guilt rule, whatever it is that's weighing down on you, The Lord began to talk to me about this word. Ah. Hallelujah. A few weeks ago. And I had put the notes in my phone, but I forgot to go back to the notes to start really studying it, but he brought it back up. With everything that was going on, he just let it sit on the shelf, but he brought it back up because now all that was going on has gone on. Yeah. Come on here. It has gone on, and now we got to go. Forward. And Holy Spirit said, tell the saints of God, no matter what it is you are facing right now, no matter what it is that you are facing right now, that have you feeling drained, that have you feeling weary, and have you feeling fretful and helpless, you still have some oil on the inside of you. Come on. You still got some oil. If you have proclaimed him as your Lord and your Savior, my God, if you are confessing to be a spirit-filled believer, you still got some oil on the inside of you. You just need to start pouring into some empty vessels around you. Glory, hallelujah. This is a clarion call to the church of Jesus Christ right now. And the question is, how many souls are you going to continue watch go down the road of hell? How many are you going to allow to drop dead right at your feet, dying all around you? They are empty vessels that need to be poured into, and you got enough oil on the inside of you to start pouring into them. To start pouring into them. Holy Spirit said, tell the church, it's time to stop looking for others to pour into you. And it's time for you to start pouring into others. Can I tell you that I believe that was part of the message that the prophet gave to the woman when she came, that she came looking for him to pour into her, but he gave her an assignment. And he says, it's time for you to start looking out for yourself. Your husband is dead now. Get the message. Come on. It's time for you to start. And I'm going to give you the assignment. I'm saying to the church right now, you're so empty and you're so dry. Come on. You're so weary and you're so tired. Come on. You're too tired to witness. You're too tired. Come on. To witness to yourself even. You're too tired to even minister to yourself. And there are others around you that are dying and they need the word and they need deliverance and they need evangelizing and they need to know that there is a God. Come on. That there is a God that has an answer to all of their problems. Come on. Come on. Come on. And that little bit of oil. That little bit of oil that's on the inside of you. Will, it, it, do you know it will? It, it can save this whole city. That little bit of oil that's on the inside of you could turn this city upside down. That little bit of oil could turn this church all the way around. That little bit of oil, come on, could fill this house to the rafters. That little bit of oil can get the job done that we need to get done. But it's out there. The answer is out there. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit said there are empty souls 
who have what you need and they need what you have. The empty souls have what you need. But you don't know that yet. Because you won't witness to them. You won't talk to them. You won't take them the gospel of Jesus Christ. They got just what you need. What do you need? You need to see some souls saved. You need to see some babies birth into the kingdom of God. Those are those empty souls. Needing the oil that you have. Uh -huh, needing the oil that you have. We all get excited when a baby is born. Come on, we get excited when we hear the cry of a newborn baby. We get excited when we smell. Come on, the smell of a newborn baby. We get excited when we can hold them and we can rock them and we can kiss all over them. How, come on here, come on. We get excited about that. But see, you done lost your passion. Come on. You, that doesn't excite you anymore. You're not excited about seeing souls being one to the kingdom of God. You're not excited about seeing people delivered. Come on, from the clutches of the enemy. But that little bit of oil, you need to pour from that little bit of oil so that you can get excited again, so that you can develop a passion again for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Pouring into empty vessels for provision. This widow woman, she went and he told her what to do. He said, if you pour into these empty vessels from this little bit of oil that you have, everything that you need will be met. Come on, the creditors won't be able to touch you. Wouldn't you love to be in that place where the creditors are no longer a threat to you? Come on, that they cannot threaten you anymore. Wouldn't you love to be in that place? Come on, where, the, where, where hell cannot threaten you. Come on, where, where, where sickness cannot threaten you. Come on, where lack will not threaten you. Come on, he, 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 said, he said if you just start pouring. If you just start pouring. So he gives her an assignment. He gives her instruction and he gives her a strategy. God has given us an assignment. He's given us instruction and he's given us strategy. Oh my God, and I don't know what you're waiting on. Glory to God, because with the assignment and with the instruction and with the strategy, guess what else he provided? The empty souls. Come on, the empty souls. When's the last time you talked to an empty soul? Come on, when's the last time you ran into an empty soul? Was it on your job? Come on. Come on. Was it in your classroom? Come on. Come on. When's the last time? Was it in your household? Yeah. Come on. Was it at the family picnic? Yeah. Can I tell you that when you go to your Labor Day celebration, yeah. it's going to be full of empty souls? Yeah. Come on. It's going to be full of empty souls that need that little bit of oil. Yeah. Come on. That need that little bit of oil that you got on the inside of you. Uh-huh. Yes. That little bit of oil. The souls, the Lord said, are the resources that you need. See, we talk about what we want to do in this house. And we say we want to develop the rest of the land. Y'all hear me? We say we want to reach the community. We, we say we want a theater. We say we want to do things for the youth. Come on. But we don't want to tap into this little bit of oil. Come on. We, we, we don't want to go. Come on. After the souls, we, we have yet to cross the street. Come on. And get to the apartments. I promise you it's some empty souls over there. I promise you it is. We have yet to touch the schoolhouse. Come on. That we said we were going to adopt. Come on. We have yet to do that. This is a word for kingdom life. This is a word for the house. This is a word. Come on. That we got all of this property and 13 acres attached to it. Come on. And we, we got... A little bit of oil. But if I got a little bit, and you 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 got a little bit, come on. If we put our little bit together, we begin to pour. Come on, we begin to pour beyond the walls of this church. Come on. If we, if we begin to pour, my God, we'll begin to see, glory to God, what God wants to do in this community and what he wants to do in our lives and what he wants to do for those empty souls and what he wants to do. Come on, hallelujah, and show his glory in the earth. Holy Spirit said, you have me and I am the oil. Holy Spirit said, you have me and I am the oil. And I never run out. And I never run out. He says, you have just enough oil 
to get more than enough of whatever it is that you need. Yeah. You have just enough oil to get more than enough of whatever it is that you need. Holy Spirit really began to show me the value of the empty souls. Because while they may not be filled yet yeah. with the oil of the anointing, they're filled with gifts, yeah. they're filled with talents, yeah. they're filled with musical gifts, yeah. they're filled with teaching gifts, right. come on, they're filled with counseling oh, gifts, yeah. come on, they're filled with helping yeah. gifts, come on. come on, they're filled with building Gifts, yeah. construction, yeah. gifts, yeah. architectural gifts. Yeah. Come on. They're filled with everything that we need, but they need the oil oh. so they can shift oh. and build for the kingdom yeah. of God. Come on. Yeah. So that they can shift and use their gifts and their skills and their talents and their abilities for the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit says you have just enough of nothing. <laughs> I love this. He said you have just enough of nothing to get more than enough of everything. Come on here. You have, that's what the prophet was telling her. She said, I have nothing. Come on. I have nothing but a little jar of oil. And the prophet says, well, you got just enough of nothing. To get you everything that you need. Listen to me saints of God. Even if your oil is at the lowest amount. You still got just enough of nothing. To get you every single thing. That you need for the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit says it's time to gather. And it's time to pour. It's time to gather. And it's time to pour. It's time to gather. And it's time to pour. What do I hear in that? I hear Holy Spirit giving us another strategy. Glory to God. I hear him giving us another assignment. I hear him saying, Pastor Karen, get them ready. Get them ready, huh? Get them ready, huh? Feet to the ground, get them ready. Glory, hallelujah. Hands to the wheel, get them ready, get them ready. Get them ready because it's time to gather and it's time to pour, my God. You have just enough to do more than enough. This woman, she poured and she poured until there was no more to pour. She poured and she poured until there was no more to pour. I'm asking the church, are you ready? Are you ready to pour and to pour until there is no more to pour? Are you ready to pour, young people, until there's no more to pour? Are you ready to pour, my seniors, until there's no more to pour? Are you ready to pour, married people, until there's no more to pour? Are you ready, men? Are you ready to pour and to pour until there is no more to pour? My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus, help this house. Help this house. Help this house. That we won't have any more struggling worshipers help this house. That we won't have any more lethargic prayer. prayers. Help this house, God. Help us, Lord. We won't have any more people sleeping in the pews on a Sunday morning when the word is going forth, when worship is going forth. Help us, God. Restore our passion for spreading the gospel. Restore our passion, oh God, for, for, for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit said to show you in this text. She went to the prophet to save her family. At that register, she went to the prophet to save her family because the creditors were coming after her boys. Holy Spirit said to tell you this morning, 
And just like that lady, the enemy is coming for your household. Regina, he's coming for your boys. Come on, he's coming. He's coming, he's coming. He's coming for your boys, Candace. He's coming. The enemy is coming for your household, Ebony. He's coming. The enemy is coming. He's coming. And if you don't learn how to tap into that little bit of oil, Show me, Holy Spirit. Show me, Holy Spirit. The empty vessels. The empty vessels. On my job. On my job. In my classroom. In my classroom. In my family. In my family. Even in my church. Even in my church. That I've been called. That I've been called. To pour into. To pour into. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When He show them to you. When He show them. I want you to get to Him and begin to pour. And begin to pour. Holy Spirit said this for this church. My God, if you give them what you have, they will give you what you need Amen. and more. Amen. 
if you give them what you have. I don't know if any of you have ever had the experience of coming into contact with a thankful believer. One who once was lost and then was found. And you were the one that led them to the way. They would thank you for the rest of their lives. They would do whatever you need. They will always be thankful to you. Giving God the glory. But they'll never forget you. They'll tell people about you. They'll say, I remember this person. And their name was such and such. And I remember when I was lost. And they came and they brought me the gospel. And it saved my soul. And it turned my life around. And it saved my whole life. See? That's what God got waiting for you. He got that waiting for you. Because there's so many empty vessels that need that oil that's on the inside of you. You, you may think it's nothing. You may think it's no big deal. I was blessed on Tuesday night by Sister Ebony. I hope you don't mind me talking about you today. Sister Ebony blessed me so much on the prayer call because she was so uh, transparent and she began to say, you know, the enemy been beating me up because I can't pray like everybody else. Or I don't pray like everybody else. And, and, and it was her time to pray and, and the enemy had did a good job. But she rose up above that enemy and she said, I'm just going to be Ebony. Can I tell you that's all God is asking of you? Uh, and he just said, J you just, just open your mouth, I promise you the oil will come out. Don't, don't try to sound like Pastor Cameron. Don't try to sound like, you know, anybody else. Just be you. And I'm telling you, she was her. Oh, yeah. And that prayer, didn't it bless you? Because it blessed me. It, it, it blessed me. It blessed me to see her be her. And then the words that came out because it was a prayer of faith. Come on. It, it, it was her being real with the Lord and the Lord being real through her. Yeah. Pastor Fred said, uh, who was that Tuesday night? Who was that lady? I said, that's our Ebony. That's our Ebony. He said, boy, she did a good job. She did a good job. All God is asking you to do is let him be God through you. In the personality that he gave you, in the voice that he gave you, to the audience that he has called you to. To the audience. You hear me? To the audience that he has called you to. They're waiting on your voice. They're waiting on you. Their ears are waiting to hear your voice. They're waiting on your invitation. They need your oil. They need you to pour out of them. Pour into them. Hallelujah. I ask the Lord today. This ain't a long word. This is a correction word. This is a word to stir you up. But I ask the Lord today to give us back a passion for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I ask the Lord, how do you know Come on and lift your hands up. I ask the Lord, how do you know about the Lord? 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 Father, I ask you to forgive us. To forgive this house. Corporately and individually, God, I ask you to forgive us. Hallelujah for not putting value on the oil that's on the inside of us. Forgive us today, God. Forgive us for being lackluster about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Forgive us, oh God, for preferring to be in the comfort zone of the saints rather than moving into My shop, I God, forgive us, God. Rather than moving into the places where the empty vessels are, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, God, for talking about them, talking down about them, but not being willing to pour this oil into them. Forgive us, God. And Lord, I ask you, and from this moment forward, 
that you began, God, that you began to stir us up again. Help us to feel your heart. Hallelujah. What you feel for the lost, help us to feel it, oh God. Help us to carry the burden of it. Help us to carry the weight of it. Uh, that it would move us, oh God, that we would pray for them and that we would witness to them and that we would take the gospel to them. That we would take the gospel to them. That we would take every opportunity that you give us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. To pour the oil of the anointing into them. Yes. Hallelujah, Father. I ask now that you would give this church the strategy. Hallelujah, specifically on what we should do, how we should do it. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said, God, that the harvest is plentiful, but that the laborers are few. Cause us, oh God. We repent today. We repent, oh God. We say that we are sorry. That we have failed you in this. We're sorry, oh God. That we have failed you in this. That we have grieved you in this. We're sorry, oh God. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. And give us another chance. Give us another chance, oh God. Oh God, 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 Forgive us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness even now. Even now, oh God, we call from heaven. And we call on you. And we ask you, God, that let us not lose another soul under our watch. Let us not lose another soul under our watch. Except that we have given them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, and about she take it. He be on no corner of one day, King. We give you glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.